See? He'd trusted his gut, and it had worked out. That's what it meant to be a hero, to ignore the naysayers and the odd makers, and do what you knew was right, and have it turn out to be the right thing. Well, he wasn't worried. Once he got to the observatory, the scientist toads could explain it. Then he could carry the war into the enemy's camp and destroy them all. Oh dear, he was getting a little bloodthirsty, wasn't he? Take a leap of faith, said the inscription. I could do that. never felt better in his life. Normally, a battle would wear him down and he would need a night's sleep. Now, he felt like he could go all night and all day. He felt like people were cheering him on and he could practically hear their applause as he slew one raven after another. Bernardo wondered idly if people who had built these poles had really, really long tentacles. The Iblis Stone and the Sky Ripper Core. Two artifacts from the time of legends. Bernardo was becoming a legendary hero, wasn't he? He had enough power to save the rebellion, but he had to understand this power so he would not misuse it. able to explode if you upset them. when you're dead.
terror of the sandcastles when he was too... The toads at the observatory measured the stone with their occult devices. I fed it the core of Sky Ripper, explained Renato. No more Phoebe Pallant souls. But the core is not an unlimited energy source, said one toad. Another said, there's a feedback loop, you see, which could overload the stone. If the stone doesn't actually feed on souls, claimed the third, but on pain of killing another sentient being. If you can truly be at peace with yourself, it would not overload. This was all very confusing. At peace? Yes, the mountains were peaceful and quiet, but he now had the power to turn the tides. He should report to the Rebellion Council and prepare for the decisive battle. The one thing he understood from all the toad arguments, maybe the stone did not feed on blood or souls or rage. It fed on empathy. It fed on the pain he felt when he put an end to another being's existence. Even if that other being was a raven intent on killing him, if he could find peace, then he could use the power of the Iblis Stone without being taken over by its evil. The mountains. He would go to the mountains. He could find peace there. Unfortunately, the mountains were not empty. There were ravens everywhere. No matter. He had to fight, yes, but he didn't have to be angry. Parry, dodge, slash, and breathe. Yes, focus on the rhythm, the dance of it. Not on the blood or the raven's core as they died. Ah, oh, it was working. He wasn't feeling those dark jolts of eldritch energy. He wasn't feeding the Iblis Stone. This chest had teaspoons stolen from every inn in Boreas. Oh, and something more useful. Was still silent. His mind was his own, and his heart too. He bore them no ill will, these ravens. They were doing their job. They were expressing their nature. Dance, whirl, parry, jab, and breathe. It was all so simple. Something was missing. Mm, he didn't feel truly at peace. Wait. Wasn't this near where Calaveras lived? Ah, the sage would help him figure it all out. Renato wondered if he could learn to cook this way. Mm, probably not. What would you do if one of these platforms stalled?
sort of yanking his own shape, wasn't he? Silenced by the Sky River's core, had given Renato enough power to challenge the Imperial fleet. But what Renato was seeking was inner peace. The rebellion was on the verge of extinction. It would have to wait. At the end of the mountain path, he found the wise Calaveras in his workshop. Do you fix souls, or only artifacts? He asked the sage. Does your uh, soul need fixing? Asked the sage. I've been killing a lot of ravens lately. He told the sage. You're, you're, a, you're a fox, said Calaveras. And to kill birds is, is, is part of your nature. There's joy in it. I mean, I might as well worry about eating flies. Don't you like a fly? It was true. That's what he had forgotten. The joy. Now he was ready for the final battle. The Farfarer cut through the clouds. The air had never felt so sweet since he was a child. There it was. The dreaded Imperial fleet. He could smell wet hemp ropes ahead. Wood and tar and ravens. Even the fleet smelled good somehow. He was ready. Mm. He was ready.